What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Thomas Gallery and today I'm going to talk about graffiti. Is it art? Is it vandalism? Hmm. Let's go. Now, this is just my opinion. My standpoint is, yes, it is art. And in fact, in my opinion, it is one of the most diverse, beautiful, intricate, and most understood forms of art that I can think of. And I don't even know. In quite a long time. Okay? Now, kind of a backdrop on this. Graffiti isn't new. The term, the term actually comes from the Greek word, it just means to write or to paint. Okay? Graph, the Greek word, well, graph meaning to write. You ever hear something about like photography? It's two Greek words photo meaning light, and graphy meaning to write. So, light writing. Okay? Graffiti. The word is already in there. It's in the first part of the word. Graph means to write. Okay? Graffiti. Write. Write or paint. Okay? Now, the concept of quote unquote graffiti is not new. There is evidence in Greece and Rome of people painting things, painting words and letters on the wall to kind of show a political dissidence. Like if, if in the Greek culture they don't like that particular ruler or in the Roman culture they would like that particular ruler or emperor they would write something on the wall you know showing their dissidence, showing they didn't like the way things were going, the status quo at the day they didn't like it. Okay. And graffiti is not just spray paint on a wall. Okay, now we're going to fast forward all the way to modern times. By modern, I mean the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000, and the 2010s, up until today. Okay, graffiti was seen, you know, during that time as underground and, a, you know, was artists with nothing better to do with their lives and just vandalized property. Okay. And the flip side of that is not many people actually want to know the history of modern graffiti. It pretty much came from lack of funding in the urban areas, the hood, okay? No money in the hoods. So those particular artists didn't have the resources and the funding to put their artwork on places that would that would deem valuable, okay. It, it, it wasn't seen as, as such. The the arts were the last thing, were always the last thing to get noticed. Same things now. If you look at a lot of schools, the music and the arts are always the first to go when it comes to school funding. The athletics, highly funded. The math and sciences, okay. But when it came to the arts and music, they were the first ones to go. Okay? Every, almost every school I went to, in high school, in elementary school, junior high, the art program was either poorly funded or taken out. Okay? And that happened a lot in the inner cities. The art programs were either poorly funded or pushed out altogether. So you had these artists with nothing to do. They have all this creative energy and nowhere to put it. So you don't have funding for sketchbooks. You don't have funding for paper. You don't have funding for a particular wall. No one was commissioning these graf graffiti artists to put their artwork on public places to be seen by the public and maybe bring the property value up of those places. Back then, that was not happening. 
So these creative people found the, the quickest thing they could find to put their artwork on. And you will see it on walls, you will see it on the sides of trains, you see it on buildings, the street, uh, lamp posts, whatever they could find to put their artwork on. They would do it, and it would probably most likely do it at night because it was it was seen as something that was irrelevant. It wasn't art. It, it's not like oh these aren't these aren't Picasso paintings. These aren't Leonardo da Vinci paintings. This this will never change anything. This will never revolutionize anything. No one will actually change their thought process when they see this graffiti art. So these artists will stay hidden. You probably see them walking throughout, throughout the streets in the daytime. They look like normal people, but you would never know that a night before they put a beautiful piece of artwork on the side of a train. That when that, that train goes by the public, the people will see that artwork, and some would like it, some would be in awe and inspired, say, "Oh, that is beautiful. Whoever did that is a genius." Then people would say, "Ugh, why are they messing up this train? This train is what's wrong with the train? Why do people want to just vandalize things and destroy things? They got nothing better to do." Well, in fact, no, they don't, because the funding that would properly give them a way to channel their artistic ability was taken. So, no, they don't have nothing better to do. The money was taken out. That, that's that's, the, that's the, the balance right there. No funding, nothing to do. Okay? Artistic people need something to do. You don't fund them, they're still going to have something to do. So, for years, for decades, throughout my childhood, graffiti was always seen as less than nothing. Graffiti artists would be arrested. If, if the police found a graffiti artist doing, doing their graffiti on the wall, they'll get arrested back then. Spend a couple of days in jail, let them out. They'll get arrested. Excuse me. And the art studios wasn't messing with them either. Art studios didn't care. Art studios didn't see them as, oh, this is nice. This is revolutionary. This would be beautiful in my art studio. They didn't see that either. They, they saw it as these people are wasting their time. They don't know what they're doing. No one will ever come from, come 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 out of the streets and become the next Da Vinci. No. We will not find the next Andy Warhol in the streets. What people don't know is that Andy Warhol was inspired by graffiti artists. His whole, his Andy Warhol's whole, whole fame was based off of graffiti. Look, go look at his work: the Campbell suit, the Marilyn Monroe pieces. You can find it on the walls of the trains by the same graffiti artists who were thrown in jail. The same things. They just use spray paint. That's what they did. They just used spray paint. You have artists like Basquiat, who came out of the streets, who came out of that graffiti era. He put that graffiti inspired work onto his canvases. People loved it. The studios bought it. Everyone said, This is revolutionary. This is the next wave of art. Everyone after him will follow his inspiration, and you will see the next, you will see the next Picasso, you will see the next Basquiat, you will see the next Warhol. All of them inspired by graffiti, in some form or fashion. All of them inspired by graffiti. So now there's an uh, uprising, and graffiti become a popular. There's still some backlash, but now there's more acceptance of graffiti writers and their work than it was 20 years ago. 20 years ago this would not happen. I, I saw on a YouTube video that a group of graffiti artists went to Dubai. That's in the United Arab Emirates overseas in, in the Middle East. Quote unquote Middle East. The UAE commissioned a group of graffiti artists to go fly over and make, paint, create, write the world's 
longest, the world's longest graffiti art. The world's longest graffiti art. And they did it. And it is beautiful. The detail that you will find in graffiti writing is nothing short of magical. Is best way I put it is magic. I myself, I do graffiti. Now, do I spray paint on on walls? No, I don't, cause I don't have any spray cans. But I do graffiti writing also. In high school, I was known for doing that in high school. Papers galore, just the graffiti writing, just different type lettering, none of that, all of that. And what happens is. The same art form that was looked down upon, advertising pick it up. You can't go on any billboard, any magazine, any movie credits, any TV shot, nowhere without finding at least one piece of imagery that is not inspired by graffiti. Go outside right now, drive down the highway, look up on a billboard. And you will find some form of curved lettering, some form of different script, some image, some abstract image. All of that is inspired by graffiti. The same people who will, who will get arrested are now making money putting their artwork on billboards. People getting paid thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars to do the same thing that they would get arrested for 20 years ago. I think it's beautiful. It's poetic justice, if you would. Because the people who started out as graffiti artists, the funding was taken from them. In the beginning of graffiti writing, the funding was taken from them. The artists that were, that could have been the next Picasso, their dreams were shattered 30, 40 years ago because the funding was taken from them. 20 years ago, the funding was taken from them. So you couldn't build up. You couldn't find the next Picasso. You couldn't find the next Da Vinci. You couldn't find the next Warhol because the funding was taken from them. From the hoods. The, the hood, the, the streets, it was taken from them. Now all of a sudden, not only are the, those same people making money, people are looking for them to fund their artwork. People are saying, you know what? Now, now they're saying, now, yeah, this, this is our work. We made a mistake 40, 30, 20, 10 years ago. We made a mistake. We want to pay you to put your work on our wall because we see that people are attracted. Whether positive or negative, people are attracted to this work. People have their attention now. We, You have the people's attention, whether they like it or not. It could be a political statement. It could be... You know, an emotional outcry it could be someone passed away, but every time someone walks by, whether it be a positive or a, or a negative comment or reaction, you have people's attention, and that is what art is supposed to do. Art is supposed to bring a reaction, regardless of how that person feels about it. They have a reaction to it. It makes them think. It makes that person stop and say, "Hmm." Although I don't like them putting it on the wall I can't deny it is beautiful and obviously this person is learnt because they're putting something up here that isn't negative they're not promoting violence they're actually talking about a political idea apparently this person or these people are obviously aware of the times in which they live they're aware of the social political climate they put it in their artwork you can't you can't go you can't go in the way nowadays without finding a Trump or Hillary Clinton graffiti art that that gives off some idea that this person is aware. This person is awake. Obviously this part this person is probably the most awake person that you will find in the streets. This person knows more about the political climate than the average fifty people walking down the street. And all they did was take their ideas and put it in imagery, put it in a, in a form of visual art, and put it on the walls for the world to see 
and all they wanted to do was make that person stop and think. That's all they wanted to do. And it worked. Whether it's positive or negative, it made that person think. Hmm. And now you have a conversation. That one graffiti, that one graffiti post on that wall by that artist that no one likes made two more people stop and have a conversation about what's going on today. Police brutality. A man was just killed yesterday. Shot, shot down. Trying to fix his car. Murdered. Innocent black man. Innocent black man was killed trying to fix his car. Police came to him and now he's dead. Now watch the now watch the next artist. The next artist. Pay attention everybody. You may walk down the street and you may find a big mural on a wall about police brutality. That's gonna make somebody think and make somebody ask questions as to why. You may find a you may find a you may find a graffiti piece about Colin Kaepernick and him protesting the national anthem by by sitting down. You're gonna find it if it's not already out there. You will find a piece of a, a graffiti graffiti work of that. You will most definitely definitely find a presidential candidate graffiti piece with Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. You will find it. Or you just walk down the street somewhere in your neighborhood. Walk down the street where a bunch of people, where a bunch of people. Go. You ever notice that you find all all this graffiti in places where there are multitudes of people? Why is that? That person could easily put it in a place where, where nobody would see it. They put it in a place purposely where people would see it. That's the whole point. You put it on the side of, side of a train. Who's not going to see a train going by? The train goes by a train station. Who's not going to see it? Everybody's going to see it. That's the point. Art is to make you think. We want you to see it. We want you to see it. We want you to think. And if by chance someone sees it and says, you know what, I like this work so much, I'm willing to pay you for your graffiti work. I will put it in my studio. I will pay you. All the more better. So you get to teach people and get paid. People are learning. People are listening. People are talking. And you're getting paid for doing what you would do for free anyway. Tell me that's not beautiful. I love graffiti. I love it, I love it, I love it. I wish I could see more of it. I know in some countries across the world, they have what's called graffiti graffiti road. It actually, it actually, it does, it actually say graffiti on the road sign, but there's a road, a stretch of stretch of, of land stretch of real estate that is nothing but graffiti beautiful graffiti from one block to the end straight graffiti I would love to see that here in the United States or see a group of graffiti artists break the Guinness World Record that was set in Dubai I want to see somebody in the United States do that or shoot this is what you could do that's what you could do. Take two, take about one or two graffiti artists from all, I won't say seven continents because no one, no one really lives in Antarctica. At least, at least not a graffiti artist. So I say take two, two to three, two to three of the best graffiti artists from the six continents that people are, pop the six continents, six of the seven continents. And have them come together, collaborate to break the record of the world's longest uh, graffiti mural. I would say three. Three. Eh, it don't matter. I will just, a, a minimum, no less than three. No less than three graffiti artists from six of the seven continents to come together to, make the, to break the record for the world's longest graffiti piece. Yeah. That's what I think should happen. You have you have people from different cultures, 
different languages, different styles, different points of view, different political backgrounds, different affiliations. You may come from a country who, who, who has a monarch, who has a dictatorship, who has a um, who has, is, a, is a republic. I can't say democracy because the well, United States doesn't it actually doesn't say democracy. The United States is a republic. That's what it says in the Constitution. So all these different well, yeah, you have di from people who practice traditional indigenous sp uh, spiritual systems you have a Christian, a Muslim, an atheist, an agnostic, a uh, someone who practices Judaism, Zoroastrianism, Buddhism, Taoism, all these different backgrounds. But the one thing they have in common is that they love art and they're all graffiti writers. From six of the seven continents. Shoot, if you can find somebody from Antarctica that does graffiti, bring them, I don't care. Bring them. Put them all together and say, look, I want all of you from all these different backgrounds. Y'all don't, don't speak the same language. We'll figure that out. Y'all have political, different political backgrounds. We'll figure that out. All have different spiritual faith systems, all different religious systems. We'll figure that out. Different orientations. We'll figure that out. But you're all here for one reason. You all love art. You all are artists. You all love art. You all love graffiti. And this is what we're going to do. We have all of you collaborate to set a new world record for the world's longest graffiti mural. And all you got to do is step out the room, close the door, and watch them create. Watch what they come up with and say, y'all just go ahead. Whatever comes to your mind, y'all collaborate and go ahead. And watch what happens. You, you will have the modern day equivalent of the Mona Lisa, Sistine Chapel, Warhol's, the Warhol uh, Campbell, Campbell Soup Can. You will have Michelangelo's David. You will have the cave paintings in the wall. You will have Egyptian Egyptian uh, writing, Egyptian painting, all in one. You will have the best of the best that has ever walked this planet, all in one room, creating something. Because that, because that piece, that graffiti piece, will last longer than all those graffiti artists, and that 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 piece of graffiti can actually outlast their entire generation. It can be up for thousands of years. You will see in the history books, five hundred years from now, or a thousand years from now, or two thousand years from now. You will see that history will remember the people who collaborated to come to come together for that for one purpose. For all artists, some of those people. May not even like each other. But like, you know what? We may have disagreed with each other, but I like your artwork. I like your artwork too. We have two we got two different political ideas. Your country don't like my country. But your artwork is nice. And you I can't understand you. You speak French, I speak Japanese. We don't understand each other. But I know when I saw this person's artwork, I didn't have to. I didn't have to know their language. We all speak one language, art. And the and what you're saying right now with your art, I understand very well, and I can relate. Let's do some more. You have created a lasting friendship. You have you have brought together brought together countries who probably were in war ten years ago, five ago, shoot, one year ago. You probably had two countries that were at war with each other. And these two graffiti artists came together, and the word war was not even mentioned. A fight never broke out. Hmm. Think about that, y'all. That is the beautiful impact of graffiti. Embrace it. Fund it. And you will see exactly what this world should be. You see what it was, what it is, and what it should be. And graffiti will tell you that in a small picture. It will, it will show you that. It will show you where you messed up. It will show you where you could do better. It will show you the beautiful, the beautiful aspects of the human race. 
All right? Yeah, think about that. Post all your comments down below if you choose to. Like, subscribe, and share it. I am Christopher Thomas of the Thomas Gallery, and I will see you all later. Peace.